where in addition to his rabbinic ordination, he also received a master's degree in education from the Davidson School. Um, he now lives on the main line with his wife, Joy, and their daughter, Ariella. Uh, he joined BZBI a year ago as our director of youth and family education. And uh, this is, I believe, Rabbi Max's first time addressing the Shabbat morning congregation with the Devar Torah. And uh, Rabbi Max, we are all very excited to hear from you this morning. Boker, uh, Boker Tov. It's, uh, it's good to see everyone and to, uh, to be able to dive in together. Uh, for uh, those um, who I haven't had a chance to, uh, to meet in person before we, uh, we were quarantined, um, as Rabbi Abe uh, just said, I'm Rabbi Max Nissen, and I serve our community as the Director of Youth and Family Education. Um, and I can say now that after having been with the community for just over a year now, uh, when people ask me how it's going, um, I'm very lucky that I can still give the same answer that I gave about a year ago, which is I feel incredibly lucky to call BZBI home. So I'm really uh, very honored to share uh, words of Torah with you today. This morning, I want to ask a difficult question. I want to ask what we owe each other. In this moment in our country when manifestations of ongoing racism and racial injustice have become ever more visible, what do we owe our neighbors? And to bring things even closer to home, what do we as a community owe the hundreds of thousands of black Jews and other Jews of color in our synagogues and across our country who face the double scourge of both racism and anti-Semitism. In a moment of so much need and so much pain for so many, what do we owe each other? In the final chapters of Sefer Vamidbar, we, we stand on the precipice of promise literally on the border of the promised land after years of wondering and uncertainty in the wilderness. As a community, we stood on that far side of the Jordan River, gazing at our future. It was so close that we could literally see it. And we have to imagine that as the people of Israel prepared to move forward into that future, we carried so much with us as well. We carried children too small to walk. We carried elders who continue to nourish us with their Torah and their life experience, and we carried our collective memory, memories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, memories of hardship and fear and slavery, but also memories of hope and miracle and redemption. We experienced all the terror and also the, all the wonder of the wilderness together persevering because we shared in the hope of a promise. A promise made not to individuals, but to a community bound together and bound to God through covenant. The Jewish people, in other words, have covenantal obligations to God and to each other. We owe something to each other. But according to our parsha this morning, as we stood as a community on the far side of the Jordan River, the Torah tells us the tribes of Reuben and Gad, the Reubenites and the Gadites, own cattle in very great number. Noting that the land of Yazer and Gilad, which was outside the land of Israel, was a region suitable for cattle, the Gadites and the Reubenites came to Moshe, Eleazar the priest, and the chieftains of the community, and they asked them, Ha'aretz asher hika lifnei adat Yisrael eretz miknehi. They said, the land that Adonai has conquered for the community of Israel here, outside the land of Israel, is cattle country. And we, your servants, have cattle. If we have found favor in your eyes, let this land, this land and not the land of Israel, be given to us as a holding. Do not move us across the Jordan River to settle with the rest of the people of Israel in the land of Israel. This is not a simple request. The Reubenites and the Gadites, later joined by half the tribe of Menashe, 
are asking not to settle permanently in the land of Israel with the rest of the people of Israel. And Moshe experiences their request as a painful attempt to avoid their communal obligations to the other tribes. You can hear the outrage behind Moshe's words as the Torah records his answer, are your brothers to go to war as you stay here? Why would you discourage the people of Israel from crossing into the land Adonai has given them? Are your brothers to go to war as you stay here on the far side of the Jordan River? What is at the root of Moshe's anger? His question, are your brothers to go to war as you stay here, indicates that he believes the Gadites and the Reubenites are disavowing their responsibilities to the other tribes. Moshe believes that they're turning their backs on the people. By abandoning the other tribes, Moshe also fears that the Israelites will lack the courage they need to cross the river and enter the promised land themselves. Having found their own land on the far side of the river, the Gadites and Reubenites have lost all interest in whether or not the other tribes fulfill their dreams and settle safely in their promised land. Moshe's anger, however, is thankfully misplaced. Far from abandoning the other Israelite tribes, the Reubenites and the Gadites explain that they do intend to cross into the promised land together with the rest of the people. And when and only when all of the other tribes have established themselves safely, will Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Menashe then leave the land of Israel in order to settle in the cattle country on the far side of the river. Even as the needs of the two and a half tribes diverge from the needs of the other tribes, they remain steadfast. They choose not to partake in the promise of the land of Israel because they've already found their own land. But they also refuse to rest until the other tribes make it to the promised land. So I return to my original question, what do we owe each other? And after having thought about the Parsha, I add one more question. Today, do our obligations remain unfulfilled? Have Jews who either identify as white or are perceived as white settled prematurely in our own lands of plenty and safety on the far side of the river? Are we, like the Reubenites and Gadites, living up to our responsibilities to help all of our people reach the promised land? Or would Moshe be justified in rebuking us and asking, are your brothers to go to war as you stay here? Will we continue dreaming the dream of America while people of color, including Jews of color, continue to live a different American reality? Many of us are inspired by participation of Jewish activists and leaders in the civil rights movement. Their lives and experiences are incredible Torah that we can and should learn from. But we also have to recognize that the height of Jewish participation in the civil rights movement eventually came to an end. And the black community, along with others, continue to fight against ongoing racial injustice. Commenting on this difficult history, Rabbi Shaith Rishon, a black Orthodox rabbi, author, and speaker from Brooklyn, who writes under the pen name Manishtana, recently shared the following reflection. Rabbi Rishon challenges us, and he writes the following. I've seen the lamentation that the bonds made between the Black community and Jews during the Civil Rights Movement have frayed. What happened? Let's talk about that. The problem with the 60s myth is that it's just that, a myth. When people say Jews fought for civil rights in the past tense, what Jews are they talking about? because some Jews never left that alliance. Julius Lester and Charles McDew, black civil rights activists who were also Jewish, never left that alliance. Rabbi Rishon continues and writes, are you really saying white Jews fought for civil rights and asking, 
what happened to that relationship? So let's talk about that, which is a whole different thing to unpack. Least of which being that the white Jewish leaders of the time told white Jews that the movements would eventually grow past each other, but that now was the time to be present. The history is complex and Rabbi Rishon calls us to acknowledge that while the Jewish community was involved in the civil rights movement, our commitment must be renewed. And so I return once again to the question I've been asking myself a lot lately. What do we owe each other? And I look to the text of this week's Parsha, to the episode of the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Menashe. In it, I find an answer at once clear in its simplicity and immense in what it demands from us. We owe each other, our community members, our neighbors, and our fellow citizens, the same thing that Reuben and Gad and Menashe owe to the other tribes of Israel. We owe each other solidarity. We owe each other a commitment to stay the course even until every tribe and every community has safely navigated the wilderness, crossed over the river, and found the safety and dignity of the promised land. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.